Oh, look at that. That's perfectly synchronized. Yeah. <laughs> 88 episodes. We finally got yeah. it. <laughs> it's only like episode 88 or something like that. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> ah, we should have recorded at 88 Bruin. Oh, uh, yeah. That would have been classic. Ah, shit. Now we'll have to wait till 880. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be years away. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Solutions Broom Podcast. Oh, no. I'm Steven, and I'm joined by Brennan and Rob today. And <laughs> if editing Rob has synced up everything correctly, um, what we'll be talking about today is an interesting article that uh, I came across and sent to the boys uh, last week. And the reason why is the we've Brennan recently did an experiment with a low alcohol beer. And steadily, the market is slowly moving towards that. You're seeing more craft non-alcoholic beers or just pure zero beers from a lot of breweries and uh, and such around. And it's definitely a focus going forward that something we, we will want to do once we're up and operational. And this one in particular, um, it's it was an experiment done by uh, an, a fairly well-known uh beer experiment site, Brewlosophy, uh, in, the, in their part of their experiment, experiment, there we go. <laughs> Got to emphasize, emphasize the beer on that. They can um, just say experiment. They're already brew philosophy. Brew, brew yeah, philosophy. no, but they, you know, they, they want to say that too. And basically he made low, super low alcohol beers, um, but one using a high mash temperature. So enzyme action didn't happen. And one with the low one, uh, where you know that's it would be the same thing close, too low for enzyme activity yeah low too low for enzyme activity and well we're gonna kind of take a look at his results here and kind of compare and contrast with uh, brendan's results so uh brendan you were looking at this uh earlier and you said you had a problem with this immediately God, what I, mean, was... I, 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 <laughs> I i don't like this experiment at all okay well walk um, us through it so i like the concept behind what he's trying to do is I like it's the same thing I'm trying to do with my beers is to play around with different ways to use the grain to get something that tastes like beer and looks like beer but has no no or lower alcohol and he's doing it for dry January and I'm doing it just because you know I'm getting old and I can't drink every day as much as I used to. <laughs> um, but there's uh, I, I'm not sure where to begin with this um well, so let's making, start, let's start making, with the, the, the temperature thing. So, like, let's explain to the people what again, okay. high temperature and the low temperature will do versus a normal mash temperature, for instance. So, <laughs> as right. as Brendan literally puts his hand, his face in his hand, and goes, "Oh my god!" <laughs> no, uh, oh yeah. So, like a normal mash temperature is, is kind of between 65, 63 and sixty seven degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. is the range you usually target. And I, I do most of my beers closer to the 67 range. Um, some people do steps in between. Some, And the reason I go 67 is because I don't have any recirculating heat in my mash tun. It's just an inigula cooler. So I assume I'm going to lose a degree or two over the hour. And that keeps me within a range, which is kind of the 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 active enzyme range, or I, I forget the, the technical terms for it. Um, but basically what you're able to do in that range is a certain number of enzymes are are active, obviously the active enzyme range, but they can break down the starches in the grain into fermentable sugars. Mm -hmm. And that is a large part of the purpose of the mash is to is for that conversion. Because uh, if you just take your grain, you put it in the water and rinse it through with water, you'll get a bunch of starch off of it. And if you throw that in with some yeast, the yeast is not going to be able to do anything with it. Uh, it's just too complex a molecule for the, the yeast to, to break down. Um, it's like too much potatoes and not enough cake. Um, I, I, potato, potato is the perfect vegetable. You can just have potato all the time. <laughs> and even with a potato, you got to break down the starch for the yeast to be able to do something <laughs> with it to make bug. So, so anyway, that's, that's kind of the range you target. Um, and, what I tried to do with my experiment is to basically do a mash outside of that range that you're intentionally not pulling out the the sugars, uh, but you're still, you do it for a longer amount of time so that there's some other activity that goes on and you get a lot of the proteins out of that grain 
that helped to contribute to the the, the flavor profile, the mouthfeel, um, and that's that sort of stuff. There's a couple issues I have with this experiment, and I think we should probably link to it in the show notes or something like that, so that people can can tell me how I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> but the the guy's got a noble goal; he wants to make a non-alcoholic beer. Um, the way that I've been doing it in the way that is doesn't quite get to that, but he has to be below 0. 0.5 or he has yeah. to be below 0. 0.05 to get to uh, alcohol. 0. 0.5 is considered non-alcoholic. Okay. Yeah. So below 0. 0.5. Um, so he's designed his beer to ensure that he's below 0. 0.5. Uh, but in order to do that, he's drastically reduced his grain bill. So the amount of sugar that's available in the grain that he puts in uh, would yield, uh, I think he says here, 0. 0.26 assuming you did a normal mash and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the issue I have with it is you're not, you're not really building a beer at that point. If you yeah. have two pounds of grain in five and a half gallons of beer. There's, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're not going to get it's the sugars. Really not sugars is what you're doing at that point. Yeah. And you're not going to get the proteins or the other things that make it taste like beer. Um, so that's, that's, that's where I, that's where my concern starts with this. <laughs> uh, target uh, target color for the beer is an SRM of one. So yeah, so and, almost and crystal for, clear. Yeah, yeah, and, and so and you look at the pictures at the end, and, and it looks like water, right? It it's cloudy, cloudy water is what he made. Yeah, and like for reference, uh, grain starts at two usually, two SRM or three SRM. That's your like your pale base malt or your pale pilsner malt yeah. starts off of that. So it's it's. Um, what what was that alcoholic beverage from the like late nineties, early two thousands? Zima? It's kinda like Zima. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Since I'm trying something different recording there you go. I've I've pulled up the picture so people can see it. But yeah. Anyhow. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but But yeah, so so th so this gentleman, like, he he did really super low grain bill, but then he did low temp and high temp. Um, basically chasing, chasing the same thing, but chasing it from different angles because the 64 degrees Fahrenheit, I think he, which he had it at, uh, which is, oh no, 76. Oh yeah. So yeah, 76 Fahrenheit. The low end was 76 and then the high end was 179. Yeah. So with that, like, you know, 76 degrees Fahrenheit, what's that? Like 15 degrees Celsius, something like that. It's super. Uh, 24 Celsius. 24 Celsius. So it's room temperature. So he basically had beer at room temperature or <laughs> the mash at room temperature. And then he had one pretty close to boiling at that point. Like he's uh, 82 at the, Celsius. Yeah. yeah. He's like right up at the top there. Um, and, and so again, for our listeners, like that means that at that point, like, n yeah, like you're, you're not pulling though that the enzyme activity, you're just getting a bare amount of sugar. And it's reflected in his or estimated uh, original gravities, because for the one, he got 0 0.009, which is usually where most beers finish in that range. And his low end was zero point or one point zero zero four, which is like a dry beer, <laughs> like super super dry beer, and then tried to ferment that. Um, but yeah, like. Uh, yeah, Rob, I, I was going to say it. You've been able to look at it now. Anything else you kind of see with this that seems super weird uh, with, with with doing this? Uh, well, he's, I don't know. There are different ways. So he's trying to get no sugar. So there's almost no sugar in this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he's using a regular yeast. Like you say you would use if you did everything normally. Um, there are yeast made now that are meant to only ferment low. Low? They won't give you non-alcohol, but they'll give you really low, like 2%, 1 or 2%, maybe 3. Uh, but let's see, he let ferment for 5 days. I don't really notice anything odd. Yeah, I, I'm not sure where you're going with that, Steve, but... That... <laughs> well, it's it's kind of like the other spot with the experiment, because, like, again, he's not putting any, anything, like, body-wise into it, but the, 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 the back end of it is what he's basically trying to cover it up is with dry hopping it. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. So 
so like he put again a, a token amount of you know to at the front at the top to give it some IBUs, but then he dry hopped it with a whole bunch of hops at the back end. Um, so like you know basically like what this is looking at like it's basically just like hop flavored water. I'm trying to find it in the thing where he says uh, he says he does a bunch of hop additions. He does a one sixty minute edition, yeah, which is not very much. Yeah, they're all going to be small amounts because, again, and oh, someone had a little incident there. Yeah, the dog got caught up with my power cords, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but she's all right. Um, yeah, they're all going to be small hop additions because you have less sugar, so there's less sweetness to counteract with the bittering hop addition. And then it, there's not a, a ton to this beer, so there's a lot that you could overpower very quickly with the, the dry hops. Um, three different yeasts five days later for a dry hop is an interesting program but but whatever the I, I i would be very interested if he had done both of these with a normal grain bill mm -hmm. because the the reason he's going hot so his hot mash is interesting um in that it's at that 83 degrees and it's well above the range for that that proper enzyme activity yeah. um but you're in the range where some enzymes are active they're just not doing what you're targeting typically in a mash they're they're creating they're breaking down the starches still, but into unfermentable sugars. So you can still get some sweetness out of it uh, without necessarily getting the alcohol afterwards. So I'd almost be interested to do like a, a full a full beer in in all three steps. Like do one with a cold mash, do one with a normal mash, and do one with a high temperature mash, and see how the flavor profile changes between the three of them, and how you would how you would be able to balance. Because what you should be able to do is you should be able to use a full amount of grain or something approaching a normal amount of grain uh, and get the flavor profile you want out of it, but with a low alcohol content. Like that's, that's what you're shooting for here. I feel like you'd have a hard time with, if you're using a normal grain bill, but only fermenting to like say half the value, half the ABV that you get, I'd feel like that beer would taste very, very sweet. Right, but that gets down to your bittering additions and, and the rest of the balance that you do, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of it, look, looking at it because, again, like non alcoholic craft beers, I'm still looking for a decent, decent beer that hasn't been made by a major, uh, you know, a major uh, brewery that has the, you know, basically the technical know how and the budget and all that to basically do the experiments. Because, uh, you know, tried a little bit of dry January recently, and Rob, I had some of those um, uh, zero Coronas yeah. uh, with with the added vitamin D, um, and those <laughs> and those those ain't bad. Like you put, there you uh, go. Uh, yeah, really, you put, I consider those to be number two. I still think the better ones are Heinekens, but you don't like Heinekens, so the no. But the Heineken zeros are the best. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the weird thing. The Heineken zeros. <laughs> Okay, so, just wait a second here. I got my dog doing something. Those ones are uh, <laughs> zero zeros, right? And so that's. Yeah. yeah. I don't and think you can get to a zero zero if you actually ferment any part of the beer. They do ferment the one though. No, so those are fermented. Ah, there, there is a. I, I was reading so what it is. The other they're day. doing like a vacuum distill. Yeah. So it's like this super expensive, crazy machinery that can take everything out of it. Yeah, so instead of doing the boil at like 80 degrees Celsius to do the alcohol boil, yeah, they uh, vacuum it out. That'd be a cool tour to do is to see to see that kit and how they how they manage that because like distillation is difficult yet perfect, right? Yeah, and they're doing it in a vacuum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like... Yeah, yeah, and I mean we've done that on industrial scales in my day job, and it's it's interesting. <laughs> But it's, it's still not perfect, right? Like, I'd, I'd be interested to go through. Sorry, that's the chemical process engineer in me getting interested. Uh, <laughs> but getting back to what I, I'd like to see with this experiment that, that the guy did in, on Brulosophy, um is a, a normal, a more normal grain bill. Um, but trying to, to see what he could do with that. Like, he came out, his initial gravities were, what, 1009 and 1007 or 1004 or something? Yeah. 1009 and one, 1004 and the other. Yeah. And in both cases, like he threw the yeast in and he lost 
three or four gravity points, right? Yeah. Even though one started higher, it just means that it was a little bit sweeter, add a little bit more sugar, but there wasn't more fermentable sugar. Mm -hmm. So if you did this in a, in a different stuff, or like when I did mine with a full grain bill, my OG was 1017, so still very low. Mm -hmm. And then final gravity was 10, 10 or 9 or something, something reasonable. So you, there's more sugar, obviously, that's, that you can just naturally pull off the grains. You're still not breaking down any of the starches into the additional sugar that you would typically get. But now I kind of want to try it with the hot mash side of it at 75 degrees or 80 degrees or whatever, something that's outside of that uh, beta amylase range. Mm -hmm. And then see if I can get, like, it's, it's going to take a while because this is where you now have to start balancing your grain bill a little bit more than than I want to because I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, but you can get something that has some of those more complex, more specialty grain flavors coming through properly without without being fermentable. Mm -hmm. So... So and, and he did this as kind of a, a dry hop lager style. I think it'd be much more interesting to see this experiment with a, a stout or a red or an amber or something, one of the darker beers that's more grain focused. Like maybe like an actual proper IPA that's actually supposed to have a decent sugar, you know, profile behind it to help sweeten everything to you know to balance all the bitterness from the hops that you'll do for not only your bittering additions but like your if you're doing any dry hopping as well. Yeah. Now that would be interesting. It'd but be yeah, interesting to see. yeah, and in like but the I can't is... make a good IPA, so I'm not going to. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other thing. Looking at this, like, the, yeah, these came out as dry hopped loggers, and yeah, if you look at the pictures, they, they look like yep, cloudy, cloudy. Like those glasses weren't cleaned. Like that's those are cloudy glasses, sort of thing. <laughs> um, so like maybe maybe that was the. Uh, you know, that it was acceptable and all that kind of stuff. But I'd be drinking that. I'd be like, this is just hopped water. Like, I, it's something like, at least with Brendan's, Brendan's was it's like, I can taste that this is the beer that I just had the full percentage of. I can taste it's just a little bit lighter in the body and all that. Plus, you know, I'm working in the kitchen that day. So I'm not, I'm not getting, uh, you know, getting silly while I'm handling knives. But uh, yeah, this might be something for. Yeah, you know, us to maybe try doing the high temperature range in the next one to try and pull uh, pull those flavors over without pulling uh, the sugars over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting because he mentions in his tasting notes that his high his high temperature one he did feel like was in line with a typical American lager. Mm -hmm. no, he said that was the low one. He said the high one tastes more like the commercial beer. Yeah, yeah, the high temperature mash was closer to the commercial beer. Yeah. Um, and this is where you insert all your jokes about American loggers. And <laughs> and it's basically water. <laughs> uh, but it's that's that's it's interesting. And I wonder if there's some mix between the two where you do like really high and then you crash your mash and let it sit because the timing on it's different too, right? Like the low temp mash when I did mine, I did for more than 24 hours. I can't remember mm -hmm. if you mentioned the time here for these. Uh, these were standard mashes. They were yeah, so they were done for sixty minutes. Yeah. Which well, what's interesting about the higher mash one is that since your temperature is already higher, it should be you should get to boil quicker too, right? You just make your whole so day. If you're quicker. mashing at eighty-two, it's not going to take that much more to get to the. I mean, we're at higher altitude, so I mean, stuff boils at like ninety-five Celsius here, right? But yeah. Yeah, and I wonder if there's a mix between the two that would make sense. Like if you do a the the cold mash for a day, I then raise the temperature of that mash up to like get it up to that eighty degrees for for an hour to do any enzyme conversions and then pull it off the grain and I still don't know if I would have the patience to plan <laughs> to do that. Okay. Like, okay, I have to start mashing on Wednesday because I'm not gonna take it off until Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you, this is the this is why non-alcoholic beers are more expensive than real beers because <laughs> they're more work. There, I don't think there's any way around it. It's it's always going to be more difficult to make it this way. Yeah, to make it and make it taste good. Yeah, well, that's why I want to try. Uh, like I did some reading on some 
yeast that just they just don't ferment that high. They just have low attenuation, so you're not going to get. Much. Yeah, and then you're stuck with the same balance issues because you're going to have a bunch of residual sugars in there, right? Yeah, I think I think the only way to counter that is really you got less grain, more water, or whatever, same amount of water but less grain, which gets you back into the the mouthfeel and the other things that you get out of the grain that you're not. So, but I, it'd be interesting to try, right? Like I, I have no experience with those. I was using standard yeasts for mine. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, like you could go through and do that and, uh, with the, with the standard yeast. And again, I, I was, that's the other thing. That was such a waste of yeast. <laughs> like he had two packs, like two full packs of like liquid yeast and he threw them in and they did nothing. Well, okay, no, no, they did something, but like you could like you could have like a previously harvest yeast and just like put a couple drops in on each side and do the same thing. But he just threw two perfectly good packs away for no reason. And actually there's a bit of danger at that point because uh the because there's so little sugar, the yeast can't eat a lot and all that. So the yeasts will die, and then the active yeast will eat the dead yeast, and you'll get some weird flavors in there too. Yeah, which uh, I definitely got some of those off flavors in my my low low alcohol beer. Mm. Uh, so there's a fermentation time thing. There's a a dispersion element to it too. All your sugars are going to be more dispersed. So in the in the five and a half yeah, gallons. Yeah, it's going to be lower so. concentration sugar. Yeah, for sure. And so. Then I'm wondering if this is why one of the reasons why I want to get a pressurable fermenter because I, I I believe if you do it under pressure there's less less risk of those off flavors. Um, but I don't know. Lots of experiments to to come in this. This is the yeah, and I'll be chasing. This is why beer is fun. There's always so many things to do, <laughs> and it will be very very soon. We can do this on a proper scale. So yeah, that's going to be exciting. Very soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Inspection in a week. Whoa! Inspection in a week, yeah. <laughs> well, Rom, if uh, people were going to message us and say, hey, get on with that non-alcoholic beer, how would they do so? Sure. So we got our website, no problems at solutionsbrewing.com. Uh, well, that was the email. <laughs> Why do I get those confused every time? I must be thinking email and saying, but anyway. Yep. So email is no problems at solutionsbrewing.com. <laughs> solutionsbrewing.com is the website. There's a contact us page there. Feel free to contact us, which coincidentally sends us an email at the no problem store. So anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the other way, the so other, other way, than our email, is there any oh other way that they God. can get <laughs> Yes. Instagram. Instagram. At Solutions Brewing Co. <laughs> Sign up for our newsletter as well. Yeah, I'm going to blame it on chemo. I'm going to say chemo brain is still a thing, even though it's been almost a month now since I had my last <laughs> three weeks. Yeah, you, you get to use that trump card for quite a while. Oh, for I a think, while. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that uh, well, wraps it for the episode. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. We'll talk to you again next time. <laughs>